Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Tider Insider TV. Still across the studio from Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Welcome into the program. Well, Alabama men's basketball continued its incredible season this past weekend and brought home some new hardware from the Music City. It took getting through Mississippi State, Tennessee, and LSU, but Bama was able to pull it off, winning the SEC Tournament Championship for the first time since 1991. And Alabama also garnered the regular season title a few weeks ago. That's the first time since 87 they pulled the double. The regular season tournament titles have not been exclusive together, as I mentioned, in uh, a long, long time, 34 years. Senior John Petty Jr. had an emotional reaction to the win and even more so because of who he was able to share it with. Um, it's kind of it's kind of undescribable feeling. Um, it's just, just everything, you know, personally that been through especially me and her being here four years all the ups and downs all the adversity that we went through just just to see us stay the course continue working hard and, and, and win this it feels amazing all right rod i think the thing that impressed me obviously 16 and 2 in the regular season is impressive but you had to beat lsu three times for one and mississippi state but the way that they won this tournament first game against mississippi state you could tell they were dialed in and tired of hearing about how the early Starts had been negative. They came out in an early game on Friday and absolutely blew Mississippi State out of the building. Really, it was over in the first five minutes of the game. Then against Tennessee, they're down 15. They fight back. They make the plays down the clutch to win by five. Then against LSU, it goes right down to the wire. Buzzer game. Alabama wins three games, really three different types of games. Yeah, I mean, again, I think that's the thing we've seen this year, Gary, from this team. They found ways to win different ways to win, whatever it took. Uh, we've seen them earlier in the season when they blew out LSU. They've gutted out a lot of wins. They gutted out a lot of wins down the stretch. We saw them in this game against LSU in the, in the championship game. Listen, this was a, a really um, strong test. I think it's something that's going to be really valuable for Alabama as they move into the NCAA tournament to win a game like they won against LSU and I tell you that trend in Watford uh, he was really really tough 30 what he scores Gary 30 points is that what he finished mm -hmm. with uh, really tough uh, to defend he had his best game I think of the year but uh, you know what I think as a team when you look at Alabama how they played in that game so many guys different players picked up the slack whether it was Shackelford or Quinterly or uh, Keon Ellis uh, Jawan Gary a lot of guys picked up the slack in that game and that's what it's about when you want to try to compete for a championship, you've got to have different guys step up. Yeah, you heard John Petty Jr. Uh, talk about what it means to these seniors that have been here the entire time. He and, and, and Herb Jones and Alex Reese, they came in under Avery Johnson. They went to the NCAA tournament as freshmen, won a game, uh, beating uh, Virginia Tech, then losing to Villanova, the eventual national championship. Then their sophomore seasons, they didn't go. Last year, there was no chance had to win the SEC tournament to make it. Uh, and then this year, though, as Petty said, they, they stayed the course, Rodney, and you could tell, special for all these players, but particularly special for those three guys. Well, and let me say this, too. I, I, you know, uh, a lot of times I think uh, sometimes coaching uh, gets underplayed. Sometimes maybe it's overplayed. But I think in this instance what we've seen from this Alabama team is a lot of mental toughness. Uh, from this team and I think that goes back to Nate Oates. I think that's what he is. I think he's brought a real mental toughness to this program to this team and it really has shown up this season in my opinion. Yeah now it really starts all over again with another tournament the big one and you can win six games if you can go six and oh Alabama's on a six game winning streak right now. They can go six in a row now and they'll be the national champion and it's time for coach talk. Now that Alabama's matchup is set against Iona on Saturday. Head coach Nate Oates is looking toward the future uh, to the Gales and beyond. I can assume they're going to be well coached. I'm going to play hard. We're going to have to come out ready to play. So, you know, then if we're fortunate enough to get by them, then, you know, you have to either play against Caleb Smith, Maryland or against uh, Danny Hurley's group. You know, and Danny Early helped get me in the business, so I, I, I like to watch UConn when they're on. I've seen them play quite a bit this year, so. Alabama will face Iona in the round of 64 
And if they win, you heard Coach say they're UConn or Maryland in the round of 32. There's been a positive outlook on Alabama's pass to the championship, but they'll have to take it one game at a time. Rodney, here is, here's the thing before we get to the, the big tournament. I was a 15 seed. Um, they were the ninth seed in their conference tournament, but they won four games in a row. I know Alabama's got better players. They're a better team. But anytime you face Rick Pitino, who for my money is one of the greatest to ever do it, I mean, I think he's like a Nick Saban on the basketball side. I think he's that good. Iona will be ready and they'll have a good plan. You can bet on that. Yeah, you know, Gary, I was thinking about that, about Rick Pitino. You remember the 87 game with Very Providence, well. Billy, the kid Donovan. And I think Alabama fans have that, longtime Alabama fans have that game stuck somewhere in their memory. Uh, I've seen a lot of fear this week on TiderAndCenter.com because of going back to 1987, that game with Rick Pitino. So uh, you're right. I mean, there's a lot of respect on this end for, for Pitino, the, the way he coaches, the way he prepares his team. And I know that, and you know this, they're going to be extremely well prepared come Saturday. And there's pressure, Rod, even for a team that's never been to the Final Four. You know, if you're an eight or a nine seed or a ten seed or a seven seed, uh, you know, you want to get in, you want to win a game. But I don't think you're getting as a fan base what we're going to Final Four. But when you're a two seed and the number one two seed, the fifth rated team in the tournament, and you've gone 19 and two in your conference, I think the expectation is, hey, we want to make a run. And, you know, I don't know that you can get to the Final Four. A lot of things have to go your way. But I do think for Alabama, uh, they need to get out of the first weekend. They need to win that first game against Iona, then that round of 32 game, get to the Sweet 16 for people to really feel good. You can't take away winning the SEC championship or the SEC tournament. I'm not saying that. But to feel really good about the season, you need to have some success in this tournament, don't you think? Yeah, I, th I think what you're exactly saying is expectations are now kind of on the rise a little bit after you have this kind of season. Uh, you know, you certainly want to finish it off well in the NCAA tournament. Uh, again, I'm not selling it short. You want to go to the Final Four. You want to have a chance to compete for the for the uh, national championship. But you're right, Gary. I think that first game is really, really big. And sometimes, Gary, we've seen a lot of national championship teams that that first game was the di most difficult game uh, leading up to the national championship. So, uh, and this is a really difficult game against Iona. Yeah, I think that when you're facing Rick Pitino, you've got to be ready. Well, Alabama women's basketball is also heading to the NCAA tournament, and that's news. For the first time since 1999, this program has been in the big dance. The selection show revealed the Tide as a seventh seed matched up against 10 seed UNC in the first round in San Antonio. And the last time the Tide made the tournament, it was in the 20th century. <laughs> and they played the Tar Heels. And UNC moved on as they beat Alabama in that game. Head coach Christy Curry hopes to make it even farther this time and prove what this team has been working toward all year. So I think just to see your name up there, it's just, I wouldn't say a sigh of relief, but just knowing that everything that you've done has finally paid off. And, like, it's not just us seeing it, it's the world seeing it. And Jordan Lewis uh, kind of echoed what her coach had said in that they, they want to, Rodney, not just get in this thing, just a real quick thought, but they too, as a seven seed, want to beat that 10 seed, win a game, and, and who knows? Well, listen, I think it's really big for this Alabama women's basketball team. Uh, program as a whole, Gary. You can win a game, pick off a game or two. I think you're talking about recruiting. Harold called us last week talking about recruiting. I think, sir, y if you make your presence felt in the NCAA tournament, uh, that, that will help recruiting. Absolutely. All right, basketball is in the books. Still to come on Tider Insider Television, spring football practice is upon us, and Alabama is ready to get to work on bringing back another national championship. And the 2021 squad is getting ready, but already the tide is building for 2022. A latest commitment, another five-star for Alabama. We'll have that story next, and we'll get to your phone calls, emails, and texts. As always, the phone number, 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-982. There's the email address. You can also tweet at us. Use the hashtag TITV. TITV. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide. Tide or Insider Television returns after this. committed to the University of Alabama. I chose this school because I like how they produce their running backs in the NFL, and I like how the program is, and it's a great campus. Roll Tide. Welcome back to TITV. Along uh, with Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris from our studios inside Bryant-Denny Stadium. All right, uh, for Alabama, uh, recruiting is the lifeblood of the program, and big things can come from, from small places. Uh, running back Emmanuel Henderson is Henderson is a huge get for Alabama in recruiting, even though he comes from from some, a small school. 
school in Geneva County. He is a five-star in-state running back. He joins the five-star quarterback, Ty Simpson, 6'1", 185. A rating as the number two running back in the entire country, according to the 247 Sports Composite. A huge pickup for Alabama, Rodney, as Nick Saban continues to just never let up. So you get a five-star quarterback. A couple weeks later, you get a five-star running back. Gary, I, I, I recall a, a player from Geneva High School, Saran Stacy, was a pretty good running back, too, uh, the, 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 back in the day. And I look at Emmanuel Henderson. I think he's a tremendous prospect as well. I think when you look at him, he's a... A very versatile player, very athletic, uh, can do a lot of different things. There you see him on defense and great speed, uh, a guy that can catch the ball, line up outside like Kenyon Drake could do and uh, catch passes and also uh, as a kick returner. So I, I look at uh, Emmanuel Henderson and think a really, really versatile player with a lot of potential. Even though he doesn't come in until next year, you know other schools are saying, listen, why do you want to go to Alabama? They are loaded at running back. The thing I figured out, though, is these kids that are really good, they're not afraid of competition. You see he's a basketball player, too, that can throw it down. But, Rod, they also understand that at Alabama, uh, that's what makes the program what it is, winning championships, competition within the program, and that if you come in and, and you're good enough, you'll get your opportunity not only to play here, but to play in the National Football League. Yeah, they've seen how it works. I mean, there's a system here, and they've seen it be successful. And, listen, there's been a lot of guys that maybe earlier in their careers – uh, didn't have all the carries, but that's good. If you're a running back, you want the most tread you can have by the time it's uh, your turn to go to the NFL. You look at Eddie Lacy, he really didn't carry the ball a lot until probably his junior year and then took off his senior year. Nike Harris, the first two and a half seasons, he didn't carry the load much, but you saw what he did the last season and a half or yeah. so. So, uh, again, these guys have a lot of tread, and uh, you mentioned it, Gary, this running back room is, is very loaded. And can you Drake and Josh Jacobs, never even full-time starters. They're both making a lot of money in the National Football League. Jacobs, in fact, was the number one draft pick and never started a game at Alabama. Let that uh, soak in for a minute. All right, Alabama football is going to begin spring practice this Friday, getting ready for the 2021 season. Just good to have a spring practice, isn't it, after last year? That guy right there, Bryce Young, clearly uh, can benefit from spring training. All the quarterbacks after not having one last year. A-day game is going to be coming up uh, in April. And... Um, Alabama will practice 14 times, and the eight-day game will count as a 15th practice. Uh, Ronnie, I know we're not going to have to uh, have the ability to be there in person because of the pandemic that's still ongoing. I know still we'll look at the video clips, and we'll get all the information we can. What do you think are some storylines going into this spring uh, practice? Well, I, I just think when you look on the offensive side, Gary, you've got so many faces with the new coaches. Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator. Doug Marone, the offensive line coach. Uh, Jay Graham, the tight ends coach. Robert Gillespie, the running backs coach. You lost four-fifths of your offensive staff right there. And then you got the new faces like Bryce Young there, Paul Tyson. Jalen Milrose, a good-looking true freshman quarterback out of Katy, Texas, the Houston area. A lot of those things that you're, you're certainly going to have to develop at the quarterback position. You've got to replace Devontae Smith, the Heisman Trophy. Jalen Waddell got a lot of talented young receivers, uh, a lot of guys that came in, three true freshmen that are here now. Jace McClellan, the running back, I think he's a guy certainly going to compete with Brian Robinson to get some carries next year. I think Jace is a future star. Yeah, you wrote about five young titers ready to blossom. You didn't include Anderson and Malachi Moore because they were starters as freshmen, but you mentioned Young, you mentioned McClellan. Smith, the interior defensive lineman, Brian Branch, the defensive back and wide receiver, Javon Baker. Yeah, I mentioned all those guys. I think when you look at that recruiting class, Gary, and there you see Javon Baker, number five. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Gary, 2017 class has kind of been uh, the one that's considered maybe the best that Nick Saban's had when you look at all the All-Americans, you look at all the Heisman Trophy uh, finalists that was in that group. They won two national championships. And you hate to compare a group, but I will say this. I think the 2020 class, the guys that were freshmen last year, a lot of talent in that group. I think if they can kind of develop and focus and kind of buy into the program like Nick Saban always gets them to do, this had this uh, group has a chance to have special careers as well. Wow. High praise indeed. Speaking of talent, Alabama softball has got plenty of it. The Tide got SEC play away in a dominant fashion on the road at Auburn. They swept the Tigers. They didn't just win the series. They, they swept them. And uh, they're up to number two now in the national rankings. Uh, Bailey Hemphill and Lexi Kilfoyle received SEC weekly honors. Hemphill is the player of the week. Kilfoyle is the newcomer of the week. And, you know, when you go on the road, and sweep a season-opening series, you're, I mean, you can't get off to a better start. And then you add in the fact that it's Auburn, 
That's big. Yeah. Alabama's game tomorrow night at UAB rained out, already announced. But on the on the weekend, they'll be hosting Tennessee in another big SEC series. Ronnie, you got a quick thought on this well, series? I, just, uh, I like those uniforms, Gary. Those yeah, they're sharp. sharp. Bama's always got some great, great, great uh, softball unis. Also, Bama baseball uh, won a series against Stetson over the weekend. They go to Arkansas, the number one team in the country, to open SEC play. I don't know if a sweep is uh, – on the table there, but wouldn't it be something Bama could go up there and win that series? Well, still to come on Tider Insider TV, being a champion isn't limited to current Alabama athletes. A professional golfer has got a championship, another one in his trophy case. We'll tell you about it. And next, we'll be welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. There's the number again, 205-348-9882. Give us a call. We'd love to interact with you next year on TITV. What a weekend, and it wasn't just the amateurs. A former Bama golf star, now a professional, Justin Thomas, won the Players' Championship, one of the most prestigious events on tour. It's his 14th PGA win. He joins the likes of Tiger Miller, Jack, Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus, and Johnny Miller as the only players to win 14 or more tour events under the age of 28. Phenomenal. He shot 64-68 on the weekend. And uh, it's his first tour title of 2021, but it is a big one. All right, welcome back into TITV. Let's head back out to the phone lines or head out to the phone lines. And Rick, our good friend from over in Bluff Park, is first up tonight. Hey, Rick. Yes, hey, fellas. How y'all doing? Appreciate you taking my call. Would it be a safe assumption to say that this is the heyday of athletics? I uh, appreciate you taking my call, sir. Yeah, I think you can make the argument, Rick. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that it's uh, just a happen. I think that when Greg Byrne came here, he made it clear, Rodney, we remember him saying it very, very well, that, you know, we want to be competitive across the board. You know, if we're going to scholarship it, then we want to try to be successful in it. And, and certainly uh, this past weekend was proof, and Alabama is not only, you know, winning in football, which is, you know, the program's the gold standard, but all through this athletic department, we're seeing both teams and individuals competing for national championships. Yeah, I mean, it's extremely impressive, Gary. When you look at it, I mean, obviously the success Nick Saban's had, uh, but, but also when you talk about the hiring of NATO. Now the success he's had in only two years, I think uh, the extended success that Patrick Murphy's had as a national championship contender every year, uh, baseball with Brad Bohannon, uh, you know, they've had the success in gymnastics in the past, of course, but you're right. I mean, so many uh, championships, I think you made the comment a minute, second ago during the break that there's so much winning going around, around here that you can't keep up with it all. Uh, it's been pretty amazing. Absolutely, it has been. All right, thanks for the phone call, Rick. We got more phone calls and some emails to get to. We'll come back right after this. We were talking about national champions. You want another one? Mercy Schellengott is NCAA Women's Cross Country Champion from Alabama. She uh, is only the second SEC runner to win the NCAA title. How about that? Alabama came in eight overall as a team as well, with the second highest finish in team history. Congratulations to Mercy. And welcome back into TITV. Let's head right back out on the phone lines and talk with our good pal CB right here in Tuscaloosa. How you doing, CB? Fine, man. How y'all getting along? Doing great. Good good to talk to you. I tell you, this, this basketball team, uh, they can get up and down the court. Of course, hey, uh, I think people you go out and play a little better and the, and the turnovers that they can do a lot of things because uh uh you know they got the coach and he's got them coached up of course i get so nervous watching my meeting and drinking out of both hands I, you know uh, but uh i hope they get, get it together and go on Thank yes you. what do y'all think yes cb they, they are a really versatile team they got a lot of length um, you know, adjusted defensively. I think they're second in the country. Uh, a lot of that is because of their athleticism. And they can shoot the threes, Rodney, but as we talked about, they don't have to, you know, if the threes are off, they can get to the basket. They can, they can create offense uh, with the dribble drive. So they're a team that's found uh, different ways to win games, even when they haven't been hot from the outside, which is their calling card. No, uh, too, too, Gary, Javon Quinterly, five-star player that was, you know, originally was headed to Villanova and, uh, I don't want to say he started slowly, but we're starting to really see why he was so highly regarded coming out of high school. I mean, he's been fantastic, was the SEC tournament MVP, uh, and, I, and I think he's going to be real key in this NCAA tournament. Yeah, he has been playing great. All right, let's get to an email before we close out the segment. Will J.D. Davis start next season from Emmanuel Montgomery? 
Uh, I don't know, but I tell you this, he's extremely talented. He's a McDonald's All-American. Uh, he just lit up the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game last Friday night. The kid can score, Rodney, and he is uh, he's physically put together. He looks like a strong safety uh, at about 6'2". So I think he'll have an opportunity to be a starter. It, yeah, very impressive, Gary. I mean, he can really score. I think he scored, what, 61 in the All-Star? game this past weekend and uh, so he can really light it up and I think that's the thing about uh, this Nate Oates program Gary is the recruiting he's building for the long haul this has an opportunity to be a program that's going to be really strong for several years yeah, just like in football all sports you got to recruit Nate Oates understands that thanks for the phone call emails we'll be back after this you want another championship we got for you. University of Alabama played host to the NWBA Collegiate Wheelchair National Championships and the women's team. Uh, they won the national title right here at home, beating New Arlington in the finals to secure their seventh national title in the last 12 years. The men's wow. team lost in the finals to UT Arlington to finish second nationally. Uh, this is another just great example of Alabama winning in just about everything that it does. Certainly appreciate you tuning in tonight. Don't forget, if you missed any of the program, you can catch a replay tonight following the news at 10 at 1030 or find it anytime at WVUA23.com. And Rodney will have a uh, replay as well at TiderInsider.com. All right, for Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. We're going to leave you tonight with some celebration video of the Alabama Women's Wheelchair National Championship this past weekend here in Tuscaloosa. Have a great night, everybody. Roll Tide.